Hey everyone, uh, my name is Art. I run the No Code Devs community. I'm happy to have everybody here as we have a exciting topic today and partner presentation with Drona HQ. Um, presenting from Jonah, Drona today will be Jinan. He's one of the co-founders. He's going to give an overview of what can be done in uh, Drona HQ, as well as uh, available to answer any questions that you might have about the platform itself. So. Um, again, thank you for being a part of the No Code uh, Devs community and joining this presentation. Um, again, put questions in the chat and uh, we will answer them as we can go. There'll be a separate Q&A at the end. And finally, this presentation will be recorded and we'll distribute it out to everybody who registered for the event um, afterwards within a day or two. So if you happen to miss something or you just want to rewatch the presentation, fear not, um, this will be made available to everyone in a few days. So um, with that being said, I'll go ahead and hand it over to Jen. Hey, thanks Art. Thanks a lot. Uh, good morning and good evening to everybody from parts of the world. So I can't have a standard greetings, but here we go. All right, thank you so much for having me. A quick introduction. I am co-founder of Drona as, uh, as Art mentioned. And uh, so Drona HQ uh, is a tool for building internal apps. Uh, typically for web and mobile both. So, um, and, and the sweet spot for the tool is to do front-end applications, right? So uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna straight away, like, you know, get into, into the essential parts of the, you know, of, the, of this particular presentation, which is the demo. And just before I begin, I'm just gonna give you a quick overview in terms of how do we navigate a Drona HQ, right? So essentially there are three parts to Drona HQ. Part one is about building a UI. Uh, part B is about getting in the data from different data sources and C is, uh, you know, uh, the logic or the workflow part of it. Uh, so what do you really want to do with the data, right? So these are essentially the three parts of, uh, you know, of the front-end application development tooling stack of Drona HQ. Now, um, apart from that, uh, the Drona HQ as a platform provides uh, three, um, three different add-ons. Um, or rather I would say four. Uh, so first is like, you know, it provides an online database. Uh, so it allows you to, uh, you know, let's assume if you need some hard-coded data elements in your application and, or rather if you just want to qu quickly create some masters, like maybe a city master or maybe um, say a holiday master or things like that. So you could use uh, leverage Drona HQ's inbuilt platform uh, database. Second is uh, it has an automation engine built in. So let's assume you want to register some web books. So let's say something happens in Salesforce and you want to react to it in your application. You could do that. Uh, C is, um, you know, it has uh, an ability to do workflows. So the idea is uh, let's assume you want to quickly create some, some um, you know, some, some business process workflows around say leave application, you would, would want to have a multi-tiered structure of say approvals, right? So you could you could build it using the BBM tooling stack within Drona HQ. And the fourth is an ability to generate PDFs for documents, right? So these are four um, additional add-ons, uh, which is not part of the main platform, but you know, typically these are add-ons which are available just in case, you know, you want to extend the capability of the tooling. So bulk of our today's presentation and demo will be around the first three blocks of building, uh, you know, front-end applications for web and mobile. Uh, typically our sweet spot is to do internal applications. So we're just gonna stick to those kind of use cases. However, feel free to ask us questions. We've been in this business for more than uh, 10 plus years now and the low code, no code platform uh, is in existence since last three and a half years. So feel free to ask me questions. We have the thought of use cases and would love to help you guys out, right? So now uh, let me just uh, like, you know, set up the context over here. So right now, like, you know, I'm into uh, the console where like, you know, you can start building your applications, right? So um, as you could see, like, you know, the first part is apps over here. I'm already logged in and, uh, you know, by the click of a button, I can go ahead and I can start building my applications. Now, uh, the moment I start, say, like, you know, I want to build a new app, uh, I land up into all the templated applications section, wherein I can go ahead and I can choose, say, something which is a relevant app that I'm trying to build. Let's assume if I'm trying to build uh, an employee onboarding board, 
an employee onboarding application, then I can just uh, you know look into it and I can see whether this is like you know this is something that I'm look, really looking at building, right? And I can interact with this, and if I see this is something on what I really want to do, I can use this template and I can get started. Right now, I'm not going to look at any template, but rather I'm just going to start with the blank application, right? And um, so let's let's just get started with this, right? So I'm just going to name this as uh, DHQ No Code. A workshop demo and i'm just gonna give some description to this this is a demo app and here we go right uh, templating is a mechanism in which which users within drona hq would see this application so i'm just gonna put this this is for sales guys within the team who's gonna see this right and um, so it's it's a it's one of the things that can allow you to distribute your apps different internal apps to different teams so right now I've just like you know created it for the sales community within 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 my account, right? So I'll just wait up for a few seconds while this loads up and while this uh, sets up uh, the platform, uh, the the development tooling. But uh, while it does that, I'll just quickly make sure like you know I I basically show you things around. Just, just give me a second. I think okay. This, problem I have, but in the meantime, like, you know, while this comes up, so typically I would land up into a page into a screen like this. Okay. And now I, this is, this is my front end development tooling, uh, you know, front end to this. So, which is again, a completely a web-based tooling. So what essentially is happening over here is, uh, you know, I get into say the first part is screens. I can, I can basically make, build a multi-screen application. Right, so let's assume if I want to add a new screen, I can just go ahead and I can add a screen. By default, uh, Drona HQ supports say uh, four different types of screens. One is like you know a regular screen, then it can be a pop up, it could be a menu. Uh, depending on what you really need, you could choose uh, you know what what sort of a screen you are looking at building. Now, once you have this uh, particular thing built over here, a new screen added what you could do is uh, you can switch between different layouts. And also just to let you know, we also support uh, something called as an advanced editor. So I'll, I'll talk about it if, if you have some time in the end, right? So now A is once you add the screen, then you can on the right hand side, you can choose uh, some of the properties. So let's assume I want to change this header to this is a demo app, for example, I could just do that. Then I can just change things. Say I would want to call it as uh, say, let's assume I do not want any subheader. I can change the text of that on, and then the icons over here, I can choose if I want to change the icon, let's assume a menu or whatever that I need, et cetera, right? So now this is something all pre-configurable completely on the right hand side, you can configure the whole stuff. You do not want to show a header, you can just switch off the visibility and there you go. So now uh, let's move on to controls. Controls is something that you would really care about. Like let's assume you're building an application. I would want to build, say, uh, you know, add some fields over here. So say it can be a text field. It can be, it can be, uh, you know, or maybe a selection button. It can be a drop down. Whatever that I would need, right? Uh, based on my need, I can I can go ahead and I can start building it, right? So what we can do is like, as you can see, I can, I can arrange my entire UI depending on what I really need, etc. I can, I can, I can build this, right? And there we go. So now I'm also gonna just drop one more control, which is a table grid control. This is just to show you like, uh, you know, this is how a table would kind of like, you know, let's assume you will get some data into it very, very quickly. And uh, you know, this is uh, how it would show up. Now, uh, let's say now we have done the first part in, in terms of like, you know, putting different controls onto the, onto the, onto the UI. Now, the next part is probably, uh, you know, on these controls, you might want to bring in some data elements to this, right? So what we, this, uh, the, there, are, there are three things that you would do with it. A is you set up the properties of this. So for example, every control you can choose uh, how you would really want to like, you know, play around with this. So I can, I can, change uh, the type of the format in which it appears i can different controls will have different properties so i can i can change this into multi select or a single select depending on my use case i can i can change things i can change what it's um, written over here I, I i can just say like you know select any option here for example 
and as you could see internally it would it would change things similarly the label this is like let's assume this is my city master so i would just go ahead and i could say select a city or something like that right so that's how you could just go about like you know uh, doing things now uh, the interesting aspect is what happens when you click on this particular drop down action right so you go to the you know to the data portion of it and then you there are two things that you see over here right one is option and second is a selected option so there are two things that you can set up over here one is what is the default value in the drop down that you really want to see typically like you know as you could see like you know here is uh, a format or what it is expecting uh, in this particular thing right i'm just going to copy paste this particular thing over here and i'm just going to paste it over here into the data that it is expecting so I I could have also like you know just gone ahead and like you know, do things within uh, you know uh, with something like this which is like a formula builder and that's again it's a very very powerful way of doing things in Tona HQ because it allows you to like use any of the Excel like formula inside this and do things but just in case you are not really fully um, used to using something like an Excel like formulas and Things like that, then you can uh, just use the basic uh, things which are which are provided over here, and then you can you can do uh, you can build these things accordingly, right? But this is just <coughs> a lot of uh, you know uh, users who do not really wish to write a lot of code into it. They would ideally they would prefer using uh, you know something like this, and it gives you a whole variety of options to play around with date, time, and many other things, right? Uh, like you know with let's assume you want to do string to json json to string etc right it provides a plethora of options uh, right within this right and again like you know all that you need to know is uh, probably an ability to uh, just walk through the documentation of the platform and figure out what the things it has generally as a rule of thumb all excel like functions are supported and plus plus additional functions that probably you would make end up making into inside the platform so now uh, you know we just spun up some data inside this. Now uh, let's go into the table grid and let's say I would want to bring in data from an Excel sheet, which is probably say something like this, right? Uh, Cancelled order logs, which is in Google Sheet. So it's it's in the third party database. It's in it's in Google Sheets. And if I want to bring this in, all I'm going to do is like you know use a connector portion over here and look up for. I will have a lot of options over here, like, you know, things that I have already set up, all the custom API connectors in my account. And, uh, you know, there are these different databases which are there. But let's assume if you do not see what you really need, then you can just click on adding a new connector, adding a new data source. And uh, you could choose uh, from one of the many different things which is already available within Drona HQ. If it is not available within Drona HQ, there is some RESTful API that you're using, you can just feel free to use uh, the rest connection and get your get to your data source for now we are good we have uh, you know already uh, google sheets is what we are looking at right now so i'm just gonna look up uh, you know pulling in data from this particular sheet over here okay uh let's call this as say canceled order logs i'm just gonna change this into say you know visitor pass uh, you know visit say something like a visitor pass uh, log for example right let's say i'm just going to create a simple visitor pass log now uh, as a next step to this i'm just going to say let's assume i want to get all the rows from this particular sheet so i'm just going to use my account over here ideally you can add your own google account by just connecting it to the google sheets and you can do this right now my account is already created so i'm just going to use this and once it is done i'm just going to give it a name like say let's say desk and I want to fetch, uh, say, you know, uh, right now, this, these are all, all hard-coded stuff, but I can always use some keywords over here. So, for, for example, I can use text input over here, uh, which is uh, what you could see. And uh, depending on that, uh, you know, I can, I can make things dynamic. Right now, I'm just going to keep it the way it is too, for the simplicity of this demo. And as a next step, I'm just going to, like, you know, look at looking up all the sheets. So this is already pre-configured connector. So it will, let's assume this is visitor pass log. It's just gonna get this. I'm gonna use look up the sheet name, which is what it's gonna now pick up next. And I'm gonna say, I just need two rows. So I'm just gonna be satisfied with A and B. And uh, rather, I think it has C. So A to C is what I'm gonna look for. And 
let's say this is it. So let's just test this particular thing. Uh, okay, and then you can also transform the response that you have over here, which again, and you can also uh, add your own keys into the into the JSON output from any data connector. You can even paginate your data. Right now, we don't need any of that. This is just a simple demo. So I'm just gonna stick with uh, the basics over here. Okay. Now, once I have this, I'm just gonna pick up the values A, B, and C right now and that's about it and i can now i can see whether i really want to make everything visible yes no let's assume i do not want to make the reason which is on the part of my column c visible right now i just want to have the first two values and uh, that's about it so i'll just save this and there we go so it's just found one record right now and we can see like you know here is a record that it has found from the google sheet right so let's say if i want to preview whatever i have built so far uh, you know, you can just go about probably like you know, uh, click on the play button, preview button, which is, and uh, you can just wait for things to spin up uh, within this, right? So just wait for one more second, and this here we go. So, so this is uh, how this would now look like, right? Now on the top, you see there's a search bar, there is a download button, there's a filter, etc. All these things are again a part of the property. So I can go back into the property and I would say, I don't want to show a search bar. I don't want to show a download button. Refresh is okay. Filters, I don't really need. So I can, I can change things uh, right over here. Again, do I need to do, how do I need to treat my data over here? Should it be single select or multi-select, et cetera? I can do that, right? Now let's say on a click of a button, I would want to show, uh, you know, the reason of that particular visit, let's assume. So I'm just gonna put up yet another control over here. So let's call it as a detail view. And on a click of this particular stuff, I want I want uh, you know uh, the data to be passed into and to be visible. The res the result the reason of your visit should be visible over here. So let's say I'm just gonna pick up value C in this particular case, and that's about it, right? Ideally, these things could have been complex, but uh, you know it can be multiple data sets. That you would have got and so, you know things like that so you could use this so for now let's say i'm just like you know i'll put two things over here uh, or rather i just stick to c and uh, i'll just save this so uh, let's say we just review this now how does that how does how would this particular thing look now right just to make sure so as you could see and here is what i can see is a value over here right now i would want to Format this particular data, um, say, let's assume I would want to make my column A uh, to probably have date type control inside this. So I, I'm just gonna use this as date and I'm just gonna add, add this as, uh, you know, my uh, formatting option. And I'm just gonna finish uh, this particular thing, right? So now, um, so now next time, if I'm gonna preview this, uh, you know, my date, probably should look a little different and maybe a little better. So this has already formatted this into a date, but I've not really applied any particular, uh, you know, uh, format to this, right? So now I can choose a format. Let's assume I want a friendly format and I will pick a uh, month date and, uh, you know, year in a, in a friendlier format. So there are friendlier formats available. So now if, I, if I'm gonna use this, so it's gonna just convert everything into a friendlier format, right? And again, uh, you know, I can, let's assume if I were to typecast or give a different name to this uh, in this particular thing, I can just do it and I can do this. So for example, right now it shows values.c and I want to change this into meaning reason. I will be in a position to change this. And let's see if this uh, does the job of making it look a little bit better, right? So let's say, you know, here we go now. And if you can see, this has already become meaning reason. Right, so that's that's typically like you know how you go, how you would go about this. Now let's say on a click of a button, right now it's just uh, filling in data over here. But let's say I would want to uh, show a few things like you know uh, some few more options on a click of a button, right? So let's say I just go over here and I say I want to add a new record in terms of uh, you know maybe log a new uh, visitor request inside this. So what we could do is, uh, you know, uh, for now, I'm just gonna say, add, click on add, and 
I'm going to take two things, one which is here in the text input, say, give me the name of the person and uh, give me a date, for example, right? So I'm just going to pick up a date here and I'm going to delete this because I don't really need this. Uh, this could have had the reasons of meeting, for example. So, uh, you know, I'm just going to use this rather and I'm going to change this into say, you know, this is official reason or this is probably personal, etc. cetera. And uh, you know, so let's say these are my two reasons of, uh, you know, probably most, most used reasons in for, for, for a visitor uh, dropping by in, in your office, right? And here we're just gonna say personal is the most, uh, you know, used one. So my default selected is personal and here we go, okay? So all good. So now we have just like, you know, made this a bit better. And obviously like, you know, uh, what you're seeing right now, uh, say, let's say I'm just gonna add a button over here, say logger request is what we would have to do. So let's say we just call this as log a new visitor. Now, uh, by just by doing this, let's we now the most important aspect is to now configure things. So we just go ahead and build a logic behind what do you really want to do on a click, right? So first thing first, we would want to link it up to Google Sheet and we just want to add a new record over here. So what we're going to do is, uh, you know, we're just going to add a row, select one of these options over here. And again, back into the count selection, back into the sheet selection and back into spreadsheet and sheet selection. So now by default, it has picked up, uh, uh, you know, the three columns that I have in my database or in my Google Sheet. And now I'm just gonna pick up, uh, you know, say it needs this to be configured with, uh, you know, so maybe date. Uh, so I need to give keywords, which are probably nothing but probably uh, the labels that you are seeing over here. Say this is date picker, this is city, city master, and this is person, right? So he's just gonna use, these are nothing but the unique uh, values of, uh, you know, these different UI components. So first is date picker, I'm gonna use date picker over here. And uh, yeah, so here we go, here's the date picker. Uh, this is person, so I'm gonna use person to meet, or this is person rather. And last is the reason, right? So let's say I do not have a reason field right now. Uh, and this is, let's assume this is my reason, which is right now it's called as a city master. I'm just gonna change this into reason of visit, for example. And it's gonna use this over here, right? So uh, reason of visit, but right now this one to show this up. So this is city master. I'm just gonna stick to writing it as city master because otherwise I would need to, uh, okay, let's just give this as a name. Say, you know, okay, uh, you know, add, this is just adding data into the Google sheet. And on success, I would want to show a toast message here. So let's say I'm just gonna run a simple toast. And success, all good. I'm just gonna keep this on the bottom right, show close button, and auto close in three millis three seconds, right? Or 3,000 millisecond, this is like a success toast. Similarly, I can also write a failure toast on this, right? Uh, and here we go. So let's say now I just want to see how does this work. So let's say I'm just gonna write, I'm here to meet odd 2610, reason is official, and I wanna log a new visitor. So this is all perfect as, and then if you can see, here we go. Oops, so now this is not really like, you know, this is taking a unique timestamp and adding this, I can easily fix this by probably like, you know, doing a little bit of more work around this. So I'm just gonna show this in the interest of like, you know, some people who might be interested over here, I'm just gonna add this like, you know, new field over here and I'm gonna make this, uh, um, you know, just go into the formula box, make this into date string. I'm gonna pick date picker uh, of in in this sub and I'm gonna put this into a format of MMM, uh, rather MMDDYY, 
right? So here we go, right? And that's about it. And let's call this, uh, you know, it's a text it would say, this is my uh, formatted date, for example. And um, yeah, so this should be good. And I'm gonna hide this right now. So, because I do not want my users to see this, I'm just gonna hide this, right? And now when I go back into this particular button over here, instead of using date picker, I'm going to use, uh, you know, um, so let's say formatted date over here and that's about it. So this will kind of fix my, uh, this particular thing. Again, if I want to pick an output from that particular variable, etc., I can go ahead and I can do that as well, right? Depending on what I really want, or say let's use spreadsheet ID, row ID, whatever that's probably like coming from, from an advanced logic perspective, right? So, so I'm just gonna be like, you know, just to make this look a little better, I'm just gonna use a select button right now. And what I'm gonna do is, uh, oh, sorry, I don't need a select button, but just a select bar. So I'm just gonna use this as a select bar and I'm just gonna pull these things down a little bit, right? So, Sorry about this. And here, I'm just gonna spin this up like uh, log a new visitor or new visitor or see things, right? So, so idea is I can like, you know, I can use the rule section in Dona HQ to make sure that this is all good, right? Or see old visitors, for example, right? And here we go. So this is, I'm gonna use this. And let's say, okay, okay, so here we go. So now this is my select bar over here. This is my deselected thing. I'm just gonna use, hide the label. I don't want to see the label. So I just keep this in the center. And now depending on the selection, of this particular thing, let's assume it is a log a new visitor. I, you know, I do not want to see the table and the show details portion to this. So I can just set up a small rule over here. Say, say if the select bar value equals to value, say, uh, or rather I would say contains value uh, log a new visitor, right? I would say, Okay. that scenario let's hide the table grade and also hide uh, you know the show details portion which is a detailed view and uh, you know that's about it so let's go let's see how does this now look so let's say uh you know in in a normal scenario it's it's a uh, log a new visitor so we don't really need to see things but if you come back over here see old stuff then we'll see uh, you know so here we go. This is how uh, this would look like, and here we are, right? So uh, with this, I'm just gonna close this demo, and I'm gonna take up questions. We are running out of time. I'm just being a little conscious about time, uh, but yeah. So have its own. So there's a question from Jagdish. Uh, does Rona have its own database, or do we need Google Sheets or some external repository? So oh, you can use Runa HQ's internal sheets, which is called as sheets. And that is its own database. You can set up a, so for example, right now, I'm just gonna show you one of the sheets which is already there in the system. So you could just create a new sheet uh, exactly like the way we did in Google Sheet and use that, right? There's no need to use Google Sheets or an external database, but generally our use cases are, you know, customers looking at uh probably like you know connecting to their own data sources is what we usually see but yeah it does have its own database uh just want to see whether there are any more questions please uh feel free just in case yeah i can ask a question yeah. here is there a way to import let's say you didn't want to connect google sheets but you wanted to import your data into the drona hq database is there a way to that that can be done yeah, so let's assume when you are looking at spawning up a new database, you can just import a CSV and you could do that. Okay, great. Thank you. Yeah, thanks. 
maybe it would be helpful, um, you know, as we share this presentation, you know, to the no code devs community, just to uh, do a quick high overview on the pricing um, and what the pricing looks like. Sure. So uh, um, this is this is one place where we are very very different from most of our competitors because we are one of the very very few tools who are basically like, you know plans go with unlimited users no matter which plan you pick and we are based basically built on the number of the amount of usage of the tool right or uh, the amount of usage of the application that you are building. So let's assume, uh, you know, and our billing goes by the number of tasks. That's a currency that uh, that's how we meter consumption. And task is essentially nothing but, you know, let's call them as API calls, right? The number of API calls essentially is what uh, a task would mean. So every time, let's assume you are picking up a data from Google Sheet, that's that one task. And every time you're showing up, uh, you know, a simple, say, I would say, uh, a toast notification, right? Now that's not a task. That's not a metered task, right? I would say. So that's typically like, you know, how our pricing plans are built. And typically in a starter plan, uh, you know, versus a business plan, business plan is really powerful and popular. It allows you to do a bunch of things like, uh, you know, um, uh, for example, like, you know, as you could see here, uh, some of the things that business plan will do is allow you to do app cataloging. So different communities within your organization, you know, say finance, marketing, sales, growth, etc. You can build different tools for those different people, right? Plus, uh, the output of Dona HQ is typically two: one is web uh, application, second is mobile application, and you can white label both of them, right? So you could do a custom domain, you could do white labeling of your applications, and so on and so forth. So that's typically on, on the pricing aspect, right? Uh, third is like, you know, as I mentioned, you can, you can bring in your own custom functions. So I just touch upon this because uh, typically that's, that's really a powerful option. Let's assume you're a, you're a big organization and, not, and you know, you have your bunch of developers and bunch of, of you know, people who are not really so uh, good with something like a JavaScript or something, right? So your developers can actually come in and they can actually build things uh, like, you know, they can build different functions and enrich the library of things that you could do without writing a line of code, right? So let's assume you want to write a file parser, you would want to write some uh, stuff like uh, say decimal to hours or whatever that things that you would want to write, right? So you could, you could write your different uh, functions over here and when you're building your application, right, you can think about like, you know, calling these, uh, say if this is some deal value, then I can use this inside of my uh, say component or whatever that, like, let's assume if I'm, if I'm writing it over here, right? I can just go in here and I can choose to say do some deal value and here we go, right? So you will have all your function library that start showing up. It's, it's a very powerful way of enriching things that you can do without uh, how much you want low code and how much you want no code, right? So it's, it's a very popular one. And typically in large organizations, it tends to grow as uh, you know you put the number of developers on this, right? So that's uh, that's great. And then you also have something called as a mechanism to build your custom custom, custom designer controls. Right, so uh, one of the things that probably like, you know, as you would see over here, uh, in the controls, you have something called as a marketplace, right? So now these are all, uh, you know, rich looking UI controls that you can bring into your system. However, let's assume you see something and, you know, this might be closed, but it's not good enough, right? So then you can just launch uh, into your editor. So let, let's say for now, I'm just gonna look into my control over here say, uh, you know, marketplace controls, for example, we call, we will find them under installed, for example. So let's say I use this and now I, this is my designer button, for example, right? Now, if I want to take, change this, the way it looks, I can just go into the editor of this. So this is again, something which is available in the business plan, which is uh, a part of the tooling stack and it allows you to build uh, richer components uh, within this. And you can you can set things up like the way you want. Right. So, yeah, 
that's that's about uh, like you know a little bit around this and then in the enterprise category you can you can basically like you know add environments you can connect it to your single sign on uh, or whatever federation system that you may have and then you can even like you know uh, also have permissions around who can access your internal databases who will have a developer rights and who will be the end user so you can you can basically like you know uh, have granular controls uh, in in terms of the governance of the platform so that's that's around uh, you know around the pricing that's a, that's great thank you for going to so much detail there i think that's really uh, helpful in explaining you know how how the pricing works and it it is very different than many platforms right so i think this is a you know a, u- a unique opportunity you know with drona hq to you know, get into a platform that doesn't necessarily charge you on a per user basis, which is really nice. Absolutely. Perfect. So, yeah. Yeah. So I, th- I think that if there, if there aren't any questions, uh, just to respect everyone's time, we'll go ahead, go ahead and wrap this up. And like I said, um, you know, this has been recorded. We will edit it and um, crop out the beginning and uh, email it out to everybody who registered as well as the entire no code devs community. So, uh, thank you. You know, thank you for doing this presentation, Jen, and really helpful. And I think we all learned a lot. And um, we will uh, see everybody, uh, you know, in the community. Thank you so much. Art. It was wonderful. Uh, thanks for having me. This is awesome. Thank you. Yeah, of course. Thank you so much. Thank you.